Calling this to order. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, first order of business, let's get this out of the way. Uh, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes of the January meeting, which we could not approve last month because we didn't have a quorum? And um, that's the one that we need to approve. Uh, and I hope people have had a chance to look at the notes that we t uh, were taken for the February one. But right now, I, um, if everybody's had a chance, um, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Anybody? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Minutes are approved. Um, then the next thing I wanted to do was announce uh, we have two, this isn't on the agenda, but hey, we have two new members on our board. Uh, and the first is Andy Santillo down at the end of the table there, Hi. Uh, who is an alumnus of this board. In fact, um, our terms overlapped a bit, a couple of years there, a couple of years ago, and it's like really great to have him back. And we also have a new member who's not here today, couldn't make it, very busy person, a uh, new rep from school board, that's Susan Stern, which will be taking Andy Babson's place. So anyway, welcome to you, Andy, and welcome to you, Susan, you're out there somewhere. Hopefully you'll, you'll watch this uh, recording. <clears throat> okay, uh, reports. Take it away, Tammy. Thank you. Uh, so, um, just to talk and reflect a little bit uh, on the February and March report, uh, this time of year is an overlap of three different seasons for us. We're, we're coming out of a very busy winter. We have very busy spring that's upon us, and then, of course, all of the planning and everything that goes into summer. Um, not to mention when, that when it's time to get outside, it's naturally, of course, a very busy time for parks and recreation. So we have a lot of things that have been going on. Um, some of the really successful things just coming out of winter uh, really was our pre preschool basketball program uh, continues to be a really big hit. Uh, we actually did that at Radnor Elementary School this year. Um, so we definitely want to thank the school district for letting us use the space as always. Um, 60 participants over, over the course of the three sessions it sold out. Uh, we also have our, our champions basketball program that takes place annually. Um, this is to meet um, some of the needs of uh, some of our developmentally challenged children uh, participating. And we, that takes place at Radnor Activity Center. Again, super successful, 26 participants, and we have an array uh, of volunteers. So we want to give a special thank you out to them for participating and making that program so great. Uh, we have two leaders that run the program, but then we also have um, a bunch of volunteers, too, that come on board and help us. So we want to thank them. Our indoor tennis program, uh, which is a partnership that we run with Radnor Racket, um, and an instructor that we uh, coordinate there. It's been extremely successful. Um, so for any, anybody thought that tennis was a dying sport to pickleball, it's definitely not the case. Um, tennis is still holding very strong, even though pickleball, of course, is, is gaining in on it uh, pretty significantly. Uh, but our tennis program over there had 64 participants, so extremely successful um, and something that uh, we continue to offer as we go into, into the spring as well which just to reflect a little bit on spring, uh, not included in the report, uh, we, we didn't get a chance to put this data in, but our soccer shots program that's teeing up to start in April over at Clem McCrone Park, we have 211 participants over the course of 19 sessions, takes course over four days. Um, we're very keen to make sure that there's communication regarding parking and overlap with any activities and things like that that, that take place, but the sessions are all pretty well spread out, so it sounds like a lot, but over a course of 19 sessions. So, um, But super successful, and we have a very strong working relationship with, with Soccer Shots, who is the, the vendor that we oversee and partner with to deliver that activity. Uh, likewise, our preschool t-ball program, extremely successful. Uh, we have four sessions right now that are sold out for that. Um, so we have a busy spring coming, um, already looking into summer. Our Radnor uh, Wizarding Camp is sold out at Hilltop Preparatory School. Uh, that's actually run by our very own Tracy Kroom, who's been heading that program up, uh, along with a number of our summer staff that join us that have interest in you know, expertise in wizarding and Harry Potter, of course. Um, so we are taking a wait list um, as of right now. Sometimes folks, you know, withdraw as we go along. So. 
we'll make some room, obviously, if we can, um, but difficult just, you know, given the space and, you know, the timing and everything. So we'll probably just stick to the two weeks and not be able to add any additional sessions. Radnor Day Camp uh, opened up its registration last week, and um, we we were interested to see how it performed. We had like 100 people on our interest list. 83 of them have registered, so we definitely um, we have that uh, moving along every day. We see registrations accruing every day, and right now, of course, we're in the in the process of planning for day camp, which is um, definitely not a small task. Uh, so I just I want to give a special thank you to the school district again, um, just for their um, inner workings with us in the use of Radnor Elementary. Um, I can't say enough how how grateful we are to have that site. Uh, just given the proximity to the Nature Park and Harford Park, now we have the new trail to go to to Harford Park. Uh, there's also the proximity to Radnor Memorial. It just really makes for a much more dynamic location to be able to deliver camp um, versus if you'll remember last year we were at Radnor Activity Center, kind of more of a you know single dimension type of facility. Um, Radnor Elementary itself, we have some of the classroom space, we have the gym, we have the theater. It just really opens up the dynamics of what we can deliver there and, and making sure that it's a, a great camp, fun, and has lots of really great activities. So we're in the process of hiring. Um, that is, uh, staff recruitment is a, a very big topic, I know, sweeping the nation, of course. Um, and of course, we're not immune to that at all. We are uh, trying to hire as best as we can. Things have been a little slower than usual. Um, so allow this to be an advertisement for anybody who's looking for a summer job. Uh, we do have a lot of great leadership that are, that are returning this year, that are coming back into uh, their positions, but we're still hiring for lots of leaders, specialty coordinators, um, and a couple of other different positions. So if anyone's looking for a summer position, um, it's something where they could work for the six weeks at day camp, and then we could also um, bring them over to Harry Potter camp as well and give them eight weeks of, of employment. And it's really, um, you know, beyond the, the money and getting paid, you know, and having a first job, it's really, there's a lot of value uh, that they gain and teamwork and, you know, being able to mentor, you know, and, and, and um, you know, help kids grow and, you know, build confidence and all those fun things and, you know, something social to do for the summer too. It's a lot of fun. The staff builds a lot of really great relationships out of it. Um, we, uh, we had, in February, uh, after our last meeting, we had the Sweetheart Dance, which formerly known as the Daddy-Daughter Dance, in its 11th year. Super successful at the Inn at, the, at Villanova University. Uh, we had 245 guests. We did sell it out, and it really was an amazing night. We all worked that night, and were there um, interacting with all the guests, and we had a lot of really um, happy uh, family members, I will say, because we had um, a variety of different people attend the event from dads to mothers, families, sons. Uh, it really was unique and folks had a whole lot of fun. Um, we also had on, um, actually on Valentine's Day, we had the Bishop Richard Allen Park, um, the wreath laying ceremony, uh, basically to commemorate Bishop Richard Allen's famous and historic walk through Radnor in 1784. Um, there's some pictures and stuff up on the internet that you can take a look at. I know within the report I provided some links so you could go to the event website and take a look at all of those. Um, this is a partnership event that we do with the African Methodist Episcopal Church from Ardmore. Um, it was in, I believe, its fourth year this year um, and we had a lot of success with it. Actually, our former Parks Board member, Chris Campbell, joined us for the event so it was great to see him out there and our Chief of Police, Chris Flanagan, attended as well. Um, and we're actually continuing now to, to work uh, with uh, some of the, the stakeholders uh, to, to develop historical signage to recognize Bishop, Bishop Richard Allen Park, uh, Bishop Richard Allen at the park. So if you're familiar with some of the historical soci uh, signage that uh, exists along the Radnor Trail, we're looking to put together a similar sign that depicts the life and the, the times basically of Bishop, Bishop Richard Allen. So I actually am meeting tomorrow with a graphics designer to start to look at putting that together. So um, we're hoping that that project becomes a reality before next year's event so that we can unveil it or have a ceremony of some sort prior. Uh, our second annual teen flashlight egg hunt is coming up on April 1st. Registration's filling quickly. We have a lot of really great prizes that'll go along with that event. Um, some exciting gift cards to places that teens like, like Starbucks and Tilly's and Chick-fil-A and Insomnia cookies, stuff like that. 
and um, we're already up to 66 participants, so um, it's filling up, uh, and I think we'll probably take somewhere around 80 to 100, and that takes place at night along the Radnor Trail. It's really a fun event. We did it for the first time last year, and we're excited about it again this year. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, give a little adver advertisement for Radnor Conservancy's um, partner event uh, with Birdtown, which is an organization that's coming back to fruition in Radnor. Uh, Phil Whitmer is going to be doing a bird friendly yards and bird watchings basics um, seminar on Saturday, April 9th from 8 to 10. Um, there's information, of course, up on the, in the internet about that. Uh, it's going to take place on uh, the Willows Park. We also have the 25th annual Trout Derby coming up um, on April 23rd and 24th. It is sold out. We have uh, 50 participants in each session. Um, we're going to have a parking attendant, of course, down at Sawmill because it's going to be very busy for those sessions. Um, as you know, there's not a lot of parking down there, but it's a great location um, for this annual tradition. Um, and as you can see, 25-year milestone, pretty significant. So we do have a wait list. Um, so for any of the Radnor residents that are signed up for the wait, the wait list, we're going to try and accommodate them after the session that happens on the last day, which is Sunday. Uh, so that they can come on board and like come over to the park and fish for some of the remaining fish that are left over. So we'll be sending out some information about that. Our wait list is pretty deep. So we'll be working with those folks. We have an orienteering event that'll take place on Sunday, April 24th. Um, there's about 60 participants, participants that are in that. Uh, it's also taking place on the same day as a Willows Park Preserve event, which is a wellness event that's going on at the park. So there's going to be lots of different activities like yoga and um, mental, health, mental health activities and wellness activities. Um, so we have information going out in our newsletter about that. And of course, you can check out the Willows Park Preserves website and learn more. Um, this is a first year event for that. The 30th year Arbor Day celebration is coming up on April 29th. Um, we are planning to hold it at Odoricio Park. It also commemorates 150 years of Arbor Day, which started um, on April 10th, 1872. Um, and then we're also going to be doing some plantings to replace some of the trees that had recently come down and had been removed at Clemacrone Park. We have the eighth annual Wheels of Wayne event in May, so we're getting excited for that back in downtown Wayne. And we're also planning, um, we're, we're working with the school district to plan a grand opening uh, for the TAP Trail. So that's something that's on the horizon, as well as uh, planning with Radnor Wayne Little League to do a grand opening of the Emlyn Sinal Comfort Station. We didn't have a chance to celebrate that one, even though it opened um, about two years ago. So we'll be excited to do that. Um, on uh, Monday night at the Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, just a couple things I know that'll be on the agenda just to report. I know you guys try to take a look at this on the website, usually before those meetings, but we do have legislation about the Radnor Run. This year's the 45th year of the Radnor Run. Um, so there'll be a, a legislative summary there for the board to evaluate with regards to the support and partnership that we give to the American Lung Association. So 43 of the 45 years of the Radnor Run, uh, Rad the American Lung Association has been the beneficiary. Um, so it was exciting to, to go back and I recently looked up some of the history and the old Parks and Recreation Board minutes that go back to the 1970s. There was some really fun stuff in there um, and got to learn about the year that we actually started partnering with the American Lung Association. So the board's going to take a look at that for approval and then they also are evaluating um, legislation that um, pertains to the prohibition of the sale and distribution of the Kratom and the Del Delta 8, which is a discussion that's been taking place publicly um, that would preclude the sale um, within a thousand feet of a school, a playground, or a, or a daycare. So I figured that pertained to parks, so I wanted to point that out, that that's going to be on the agenda as that's a topic that really has been getting a lot of discussion uh, publicly recently. Um, aside from that, uh, just a couple of other just really quick updates. Radnor Memorial Turf Field, I think I mentioned at the last meeting, uh, is going to be replaced in June, just since this isn't like an agenda item, but a park-related project. Um, if you remember, the park opened, the, the turf field rather opened in 2012. Um, so it, uh, given the amount of usage that it gets on a regular basis all day long, including the nighttime usage with the lights, it's definitely in need of repair. Um, that is an expense that Agnes Irwin, uh, per the lease 
uh, ordinance will be making in totality. The township doesn't pay for any of that. Uh, so we're working with them through that process. Um, the trail projects, I uh, just wanted to direct your attention to the website. Uh, we, we do have the website updated with all the trail project presentations in detail that sit out there. Um, if you get a chance, you can click on that link within the report. You can go to the website and take a look at those. I know we've gotten some questions about the status of the Darby Paoli Trail, the status of the Radnor Trail extension, two of the projects that are ongoing. As, as you know, the Tap Trail's been completed, the Harford Trail's been completed. So the, the other two there are the ones that are outstanding and still under design and discussion. And I expect at some point the Darby Paoli Trail um, will come back to this board in some, in some way for continued review um, once uh, the design is wrapped up uh, for evaluation before it would go to any type of bid um, on behalf of the, you know, with the commissioners. Uh, we also have right now the, the Willows at the Willows Park. Um, the water line is currently being replaced, so there's a lot of disruption at the entrance that I'm sure everyone has seen. Um, I'm told from our township engineer that will probably wrap up in April, so fingers crossed that timeline sticks and we can get you know everything cleaned up over there and get the grass growing back um, and then start to look to the future of replacing the entrance and the roadways and stuff like that. I know that lays on the horizon. Uh, and lastly, just a quick update, uh, had a meeting with Radnor Wayne Little League to talk about some of their projects, um, things that uh, they've been working on. I know they're excited for another really successful season, kids playing baseball and softball. Um, we're working on uh, getting the, the temporary batting cages put up at the different sites. So those typically go up at Odoricio, Philippone, and Emlyn Tunnell. And then we are continuing to look at that permanent solution at Emlyn Tunnell. I know that we discussed that when we put the comfort station in. We were looking at more of a permanent batting cage arrangement similar to what we have here at Enki. So we're starting to talk about that and some of the restoration of the area in and around um, the comfort station, uh, the concession stand com comfort station at Emlyn Tunnell, um, along with also the potential of a small storage facility. Um, there's some storage needs that still need to be met um, with regards to the site and accommodating some of the things that are kept there on site so that they don't have to be moved over here to Anki to be stored for the off season. So we're gonna evaluate a small storage area, um, small storage unit that might go in behind the batting cage area. Um, and just to circle back, I know we had discussions several years ago about the potential installation for scoreboards at that site. Just to kind of close the loop on that topic, right now the Radnor Wayne Little League with the softball programs have been using portable storage, uh, portable scoreboards that are stored back and forth between the comfort station. So um, that's their solution at this point. There's no other discussion about the installation of scoreboards in case anyone was wondering where that was going. And then just lastly, I know one of the topics that may be coming back before this board in the coming months um, are the proposal potentially for lights at Anki B, which is the backfield um, here at the Anki ballpark site. So I know that is a project that they still have interest in doing. Um, and that is a proposal that we would have that would run through this board um, and be vetted out through the community, of course, before it would be moved on to the commissioners. So I apologize for the long report, but there's a lot of stuff to cover. I'm sure we've got plenty more and lots of great things on the agenda to, to go through as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. I, can, I am endlessly amazed at how much you get accomplished and the resources we have in this township. It is, it, it's so impressive. Um, I, I, I just never stop being amazed by it. So thank you and don't apologize that you have so much to report. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's a great thing. Well, I wanna thank the board and, and thank everyone in the community because we're as successful as we are because of all of you. Well, thank you, but nevertheless, <laughs> you're amazing. You're, you're amazing. Um, board of Commissioners. Commissioner Farhi. Thanks. Uh, I'll just add, Tammy, are you still short-staffed? We are. <laughs> okay. So all that, Mary, and she's uh, short-staffed. And you backwards mean? and in high yes. heels. Yes. Mm -hmm. she, is, she is Wonder Woman. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't have anything, Tammy. You hit a couple, um, couple key points. Uh, I don't want to reiterate them. Uh, there will be a meeting, a uh, Board of Commissioners meeting on Monday. Um, so uh, what we talk about here or what Tammy spoke about, uh, anybody that has an interest in 
um, talking about them, please come, uh, come to public comment and speak to them. And uh, one more thing, uh, Andy, welcome back. Um, happy to have you, and uh, thank you for stepping up, and hopefully you're going to have a, a great four years here. Yeah. So. Yeah, thank you. I'm looking you. forward to being back with this group, so thank Thanks. you, everybody. Okay, school board. Sarah. Hi. Um, thank you so much for the kudos. It's, I'm glad to see that the district and the township are working well together and providing you know, much needed community space for these wonderful programs you've got. Uh, the only reminder I'd like to give folks um, is the school district. Everybody should have gotten a little pamphlet in the mail called Shaping Our Future uh, or Shaping the Future, but we're looking into a long-term capital facilities planning project at the high school. Um, we've had two meetings so far at, our, at two of our elementary schools. And the last meeting, if you wanted to come and see a more detailed presentation about what we're doing and get involved, ask questions, uh, will be this Wednesday night or next Wednesday night, um, the 16th at what, uh, Wayne Elementary School from 6.30 to 8. So we really hope folks will come out and uh, hear some more details about what we're looking into. Uh, it's going to be a long-term project, and we really value community input. Thanks, Sarah. <clears throat> uh, Shade Tree Committee, this is an interesting issue. I don't know how much we want to get into this exactly tonight, but um, under, um, and I didn't bring this ordinance with me, unfortunately, we have a township ordinance regarding this board, and uh, we are supposed to have a representative from the board, sort of a permanent one, not an on and off one, sitting um, as our representative on the Shade Tree Commission. And right now, we don't have anyone filling that position. Uh, Claire had been doing it for a while, but she had to um, drop off of it. Um, there are discussions going on now between us, our board, and Shade Tree Commission, and Tammy, of course, on whether the, um, the representation should go in the other direction, whether Shade Tree should be sending somebody to sit in on our meetings um, because they have more at stake on what this board does than, than we do on what they, they do. I hope that made sense. Um, but we haven't really gotten too far on that other than to acknowledge that that's, that's a possibility. Maybe that's a good thing to do. It, I think it would require an ordinance change. I don't know that it would be a controversial thing or a difficult thing. Um, Tammy, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I, I just, I, I know we heard back from the Shade Tree Committee leadership. I think they are doing a general ordinance review currently um, and are planning to discuss this topic and sounds like open to, to it. Um, in the meantime, we still need to have a representative, I think, that, that is over there. Um, that's attending those meetings, and I, I think, you know, based on what we, we heard from our township solicitor, that's an appointed position. Um, so I think right. that's something, you know, we want to, we probably want to just maybe verify one more time just to be sure, you know, that that actually holds true to this position and not just the other appointments, you know, that, that occur with regards to membership of the Shade, of the Shade Tree Commission. Um, because I know over the years, I mean, Claire's been wonderful. I think Claire's she's been, been our longest standing member on the shade tree, at least during my time here. Yeah. You know, I, I, if you go back, you know, 10 years, it, it's really been a revolving door. Um, and, and maybe it becomes agenda based, you know, if there's an item where the parks board member, you know, has relevance to be part of that discussion, you know, at least in the short term, because I know a lot of our members are, are busy and, and serve on other boards and our members of other organizations you know we have school board members you know there's a limit I think to what folks can can do and contribute so it sounds like we need to take a look at that and or at least have a plan for next month to send someone over yeah and in fact do you know off uh, offhand uh, when shade trees next meeting is I don't um, I don't have I don't, a schedule. I meant, to, I meant to write this all down I don't yeah, have the I mean, schedule I handy like, ideally I'd like to have you know I'd like to have somebody here, it might there. be coming up actually their yeah. next meeting may be occurring so, they do oh, I think they do yeah they do yes um, I mean right now it, it's in the ordinance we're supposed to be supplying a representative and I think um, it, at least in the short term we need to be complying with that and going through the entire you know if we want to be compliant we need to be doing that and going through the process um, and maybe you know in not too long a time we do get the ordinances um, 
altered so that the, the flow of uh, representation is in the other direction. But in the meantime, we've got this issue. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is, is there anyone on this uh, board now who um, would be comfortable volunteering to be our representative, at least for the time being, uh, to the Shade Tree uh, Commission? Are they commissioner or committee? Committee. Okay. Committee. They meet monthly, right? Monthly. They meet monthly. I, I like I'm, this board. I don't know if anybody has the time. Can I? I I'm not volunteering because yeah. <laughs> well, you you were ready. <laughs> but what? No. But my suggestion was, you know, sometimes when the when this stuff has come up at the school board, what we do is we ask kind of for a description of like the time involved. Like, you know, is it? Is it you just on the Shade Tree Committee or are there committees of the Shade Tree Committee that then you might get also assigned to? So kind of so people understand what the no, time point. commitment is. You know, obviously if it's a night of the month that you already have a standing commitment, it probably doesn't work for you. So those kind of just basic information might really help somebody to know whether they're open well, I, or available. To go to the next meeting whenever it is and I'll, I'll take the next round. It's the 23rd. 23rd? They may meet where, you know? They meet here at 6.30, so that's a Wednesday. Thank you, Bill. Good, and we'll I'll let the, um, we have a staff member who distributes the information and agenda. We'll make sure you get it. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do longer term, but that, that would be nice yeah. at least to have that meeting okay. covered. I really appreciate that, Bill. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, any other reports from anyone? Anything? Okay, let's move on to new business. Odoricio Park improvements planning discussion. Yes, this is an, an item that we started to talk about last month, um, but as you know, we didn't have a quorum, so I left it on as a new business item. There is um, considerable interest from a lot of folks to make improvements to Odoricio Park um, in regards to the areas where you have the parking lot, uh, both the, the main parking lot and then the other parking lot, which sits above the third baseline up, you know, up above the, the ball field there. Um, the playground, the comfort station, I know we still have, um, you know, some discussion about the woods area and the wooded area. Uh, there's some potential for restoration in some other areas um, with regard to the park and improvements. So we want to start to get those conversations going um, and, you know, naturally start to hear from the public. So I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of areas, um, you know, in the park that really could use, you know, improvements. And as you know, the, the basketball court improvements are occurring. I know we're going to talk about those a little later on the agenda, but that project is going to start on March 28th, uh, which is a Monday. Um, we also have Legion Baseball uh, that is proposing dugouts at the site potentially. Um, which I know is something that's been talked about for years. Uh, there's also discussion about potential storage behind the backstop. Um, so I know they have an interest in, in some of that. And, and, you know, some of those improvements, I think, could be vetted out comprehensively as we go along this process. Um, so in having those discussions, I, I would like to see us get a letter out to the residents. Um, so I know, you know, not everyone tunes into this board meeting and, not, only, not everyone really looks at social media all the time or the website, even though we've been putting it out there. Um, I'd like to get a sign up at the park. Um, and then, so we thought that if we get a letter out to talk about um, solicitation of input, giving them the dates of the Parks and Recreation Board meetings, encouraging folks to come out, tell us what they want, um, really similar to what we're doing right now with Fenimore Woods, um, thought that would be a good, a good place to start and establish an email interest list um, for folks who want to, you know, engage electronically and submit information, we can evaluate maybe in a couple of months doing a meeting on location, whether we do it at the park or we do something at the Radnor Township Civic Association, which backs up at the park. I know that they've been very generous in their willingness to allow us to host a meeting. Um, I know uh, Commissioner Abel had had a couple of town halls um, that had taken place in in the center there, so it's a great location um, to be able to get folks in the neighborhood to come out within walking distance. So, um, you know, and then the hope, I guess, is that we can start to determine you know, what, are, what are the interests, you know? Do we want a new comfort station? Does, is it just a renovation? Is it a pavilion? You know, we've heard a lot of things. Um, 
you know, is the up that parking lot that sits up above the ball field potential for another type of recreational amenity um, that's not a parking lot? I don't know. So, you know, I, we want to hear from folks. We want to understand what they want to see um, and get those conversations going. So ideally, I'd like to get a letter out uh, that not only talks about that, but then also gives the neighborhood a heads up about the basketball court construction, too, that's going to happen shortly. So I figured, you know, we could kind of kill two birds with one stone there and, and get the message out um, and just, you know, boost that conversation there with the community. So that's the overall goal and, you know, hopefully get to a, a phase where we can maybe get approval for design um, and engage a designer to start to put it together and, you know, look at funding and, and see how we approach that, whether that's, you know, capital funding, you know, out of the township budget or it's some, you know, borrowing or a mix, you know, grants, you know, there's lots of different options, of course, that could sit out there. Tammy, are there any, um, you mentioned the Legion and Radnor Wayne Little League, are there any other, so I don't want to call them formal stakeholders, but sort of informal stakeholders who use that field that would also have to get notice? Radnor Soccer, I think there's been games over there. I don't know if any of the schools, the public, uh, Radnor Township schools use that field that would also need to get involved in any of this? Yeah, we definitely would would want to include Radnor Soccer Club and Radnor Middle School. I know they use it for baseball and for soccer. Um, that's pretty. I think that's pretty much the limit there. I mean, we do work with a lot of the community members to do some events and things like that, but uh, we would definitely want to include those organizations and see what their interests are. Um, I know when it comes to talking about that that rogue parking lot up above there, I know a lot of people use it out of convenience, but is it needed? Does it open up space? to comprise some type of other recreational amenity or to move the playground down. I, you know, I think those are all questions to discuss. I mean, I think there is definitely on um, the West Wayne Avenue side, there's an ingress egress that can be improved and opened up a little bit differently. It's very difficult to get in and out of there if you do park in that area and it's utilized as parking. So, um, you know, we would want to hear from everyone and understand usage dy dynamics too. You know, I mean, we obviously have, uh, statistics, we know how many people are there, but, you know, as far as, um, you know, just some of the anecdotal things that we don't see is, is always helpful to hear from those groups. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? Okay. Rolling right along here. Uh, takes us to old business uh, and Fenimore Woods Park Renovations Project. Um, uh, Tammy, was there anything, any updates on this that you wanted to provide? Uh, just, I mean, real quick, just to give an update. I mean, right now, where we are is we have the stable evaluation. It actually is in the process of taking place. Um, Gannett Fleming actually visited the site um, about a week and a half ago, and they started their assessment. We have the hazardous materials, mold, asbestos evaluation. It's going to be taking place next week. So uh, we're probably a, about a couple weeks off to at least seeing some preliminary information and then allowing a little bit of time for the township to go back and forth and, and you know, refine to get, you know, the report um, so that it's, you know, ready to be looked at and reviewed by, um, obviously, the stakeholders that have been engaged in the project as well as the board. Uh, we have a pavilion assessment that we, we have some preliminary feedback from, but getting that formalized and getting that finalized. So the, the goal is within the next uh, month or two, if we could get those two reports together and be able to um, come back to this board um, and take a look at that, as well as schedule our third roundtable meeting so that we can have, you know, more hearty, um, you know, in-person discussion. Um, I think those have been really productive. Um, so, I, you know, I know we're looking at grant prospects and how, you know, a DCNR grant might factor in um, in terms of the timelines for design. Um, you know, there's some other grants that sit out there for beautification and restoration, um, some environmental grants and things like that that we want to look at. I know we've had some internal discussion about how, you know, best for, you know, us to situate the pavilion, you know, do we move it up and make it, you know, part of the current stable? Do we take the playground, move it up, put it in the upper portion of the park to make everything, you know, accessible in one location adjacent to the parking lot so that, 
you know, you don't have a lot of amenities and a lot of different spaces because um, we know that the grading obviously poses a big impact to, you know, the trees. And that's, you know, our number one goal is to not disrupt the trees. And then that allows us to take the pavilion area, put, you know, restoration in that area of, you know, more, you know, plant more trees, plant more landscaping. Same way with the playground area, that we could turn that into potential, you know, retention area. It's kind of what it is right now anyways, where it slopes down to the culvert. Um, and look at, you know, things like a wildflower, meadow, um, a swale of some sort. So we don't have any, we're not putting any pen to paper or anything just yet. We figure these are all discussions we can vet out once we have those reports, recognizing that the stable report is really kind of the cornerstone. Um, and then not only being prepared to kind of take a look at that and what that feasibility is going to look like, but how does that compare if we were to build a new building? You know, if we were to put a new bathroom um, storage area at the site, you know, what do those costs look like and how is that different? So just being prepared for all of that. Um, and then obviously gaining feedback, you know, continuing to assess feedback and, you know, maybe even hear from some, from some residents that we haven't heard from yet. Um, you know, if folks are just kind of catching on to the discussions, you know, we want to encourage them to continue to come out to the meetings, send emails, reach out. It's been quiet on that front lately. Um, so I think right now just folks have been kind of waiting for the next steps, which mm -hmm. I've just kind of been encouraging would be continuing to come to the Parks and Recreation Board's, you know, meetings so that we can, you know, go through the updates, hear the report data whenever we get it and are able to present it. And then, like I said, ultimately schedule that next uh, and third roundtable meeting, which I would say at this point, we're probably looking more towards like late April or May. And that's going to hinge on when the report comes back from the stable. Well, that sounds like good progress. Um, one, one other thing I did want to bring up but that the commissioners actually weighed in on um, at, I believe it was their, one of their February meetings, the Shimoni culvert, um, which is right off of Shimoni Road, is going to, um, it's going through design. So that, that culvert is failing. And then it runs into the park where the weir and the outfall come in around the pond, um, where you see all the cracking and the, you know, the water leaching over into the pond. That project is actually, was actually approved for design. So uh, Carroll engineers are working on a design of that that will include fixing the weir and fixing the outfall. So I, 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 that's a lot of progress. Um, obviously, we, we haven't funded the project yet, but it is something that would come out of stormwater. Um, so could potentially be a fully funded project depending on what it looks like. That's good. Things are shaping up at Fenimore. Anything from the board on Fenimore? Questions or comments, input of any kind? No, just to clarify, Tammy, because I, I think this, Tammy, the, the weir and the leaching that you're talking about, the culvert there on Sh Shimoni is the, the one you walked me through one day, actually. Yes. Um, and so that's not necessarily dependent on waiting for the rest of the project at Fenimore Woods that you it can would. get resolved sooner than <coughs> potentially it, it, it's separate. So it's not dependent upon getting everything at Fenimore Woods finalized. That's great. Separate, but I don't, I don't, I can't really predict how the timelines would right, run. Right, that's I realized I shouldn't. Ideally, they'd both run together and it gets well, done ideally, all at once. Yes, and, and I think that's certainly possible given the timeline. As part of that construction, just because there's so much other, for people who live in that community, there's been a lot of PICO activity and roads closed, et cetera. Will, and I know this is not happening next week, but will there need to be road closures as part of that to repair the culvert piece? I believe so. Okay. Um, I'd have to find out from Steve ultimately what that looks like, because I'm okay. not sure, I don't know the nature exactly of the repair, but I would imagine there'd be some traffic disruption. Yeah, I, it, I don't have to go that way, but I think a lot of people do, and I think, and it's hard to, I get sent that way actually when other things are closed. So I think it would just be, be really good, especially given how active the community has been it, around Fenimore Woods that if, you know, when, if and when that occurs, we're really good about communicating, uh, you know, even you know, a sign that says, you know, expect road closures here starting a month from now. You know, like sometimes they put up those notices that say, you know, this road to be closed. I think just giving people an idea that it'll be happening, you know, I know those signs aren't pretty, but I think that it will resolve a lot of potential road frustration <laughs> for people. I will definitely pass that along. Thanks. Commissioner Fry, were you trying to tell me <laughs> tell me something? Yeah, I think this gentleman wants to talk about Fenimore? Yeah. Sure, come on up. 
Thank you very much for letting me participate in the democratic process. I live on Chamonix Road, so right next to the park. Uh, I think, Tammy, I sent you an email with a long letter of ideas how to improve the park. So I'm waiting the verdict on the stable and how you want to progress. I just wanted to make a comment on these uh, works from Pico on, the, on Chamonix Road. One of the proposals I made, because I have my office towards Chamonix Road, and I know many children walk through the baseball field along our street, it's a private street, along the creek to the park. And the only stretch that is not safe to walk on is the park. It's actually from Aberdeen Terrace down to the park. Yeah? And I made the proposal I had a couple of years ago. I said, why don't we build a sidewalk? So now you need to agreement with all these neighbors about building, building a sidewalk. And our neighbor just changed. So we have a new neighbor. It's a young family with a small child. Heather, Jack, myself, Daryl, Joff. We all know each other. I can volunteer to find an agreement how to build a sidewalk on our properties, because it would be a good occasion to have a sidewalk. Then you don't need that much parking, because I think more people would just walk to the park rather than drive, uh, because then it's safer. Yeah? So tell me, you know my email. I'm Sven. And if you want to have some support in finding an agreement how to build a sidewalk, and who does the snow shoveling, because that seems to be the big problem. I try to find consent, yeah? Okay, thank you, that was my input. Thank you. Thank you, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Okay. I walk that stretch and a, a sidewalk would be really nice sidewalk. because I, I'm like constantly, <laughs> I, I've given up walking it when, when the weather's bad because you just don't have any safe place to jump off the road. I'm all for sidewalks wherever we can have them. Um, but that's something we will consider then. Uh, okay, next item, uh, 2022 Radnor Township Capital Budget, that is Parks and Facilities, Park Impact Fund Project Allocation. This is the... Um, uh, the wish list of uh, park projects that could uh, be um, potentially funded by uh, monies in the park um, impact fees fund that comes from developers. Um, this one-time charges that are assessed to, uh, uh, to developers in order to develop their properties and help pay for any new or expanded or improved facilities. Um, uh, or the increased use of, of parks because of those developments. And um, currently, uh, correct me if I say anything wrong here, Tammy, we have about, uh, well, the fund was, I think, 400,000, but we've already sort of allocated in some way uh, 150,000 or something like that. 125 100, for Odoricio Park. One, so uh, 400 Odoricio. less 125, so really 275. So, yeah, so that gives, what, so we've got 275, I guess, left? 275. Okay. This is money that, again, jump in. It's there. It's ready to be spent on park projects. So we should do that because we have, um, and I think Tammy sent an updated one, and I have a hard copy. I hope you it's all It's an do. update, yes. Yeah, so I, mean, I, I put in red font all the revisions. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, you can see we, <laughs> we have no shortage of, of I, you know, park projects on our wish list, and we're not going to run out of things to do. Um, so what does this mean? Well, they're all, they're all worthy projects. I've looked at the list. Uh, we need to come up with some sort of prioritization. And, and I would say quickly, because the money is there. Let's spend it. Let's let people start to use these, uh, you know, enjoy these amenities. Um, like I said, far more projects on here than we can fund out of, of, of the available monies. But um, prioritization will help. And um, I think we need to uh, hear from members of this board on, on what they think would, you know, would be good priorities. And Tammy, I think, has some priorities of her own. We also want public input on what the public's priorities are. Um, and once we get all that input, uh, we should make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners and provide them with a rationale for why we're recommending what we're recommending. And, uh, see if we can get some of these projects, again, probably just a handful of them, but some of them um, uh, funded. 
uh, we don't necessarily need to prioritize right down to number 100 on this list, uh, but certainly we want to pick out something like the top five to 10 because the money might go that far. Uh, although I also think it would be maybe not a bad exercise to at least sort of prioritize in terms of tiering them, um, in, which could change over time. But, you know, here are the tier one projects, here are the tier two, here are the tier three. It would change over time. New ones would come in, some would fall off, some would move between tiers. That's just something to think about. Um, and before we had any discussion tonight, and I did give this as a homework assignment. I hope everybody got their homework assignment. Yeah, they did. Um, some of the factors that we ought to consider, we talked about this at some prior meetings where, I think Tammy originally gave us this list, it might have been two or three meetings ago. Um, safety is obviously, what, what, what park uh, projects here are based on safety, they need to do, improve situations so that they are safe. Uh, Non-safety related need, are there things that aren't functioning, they're broken, uh, it's not a safety issue but the need is there, you know, if we think it's a useful facility, then it ought to be functioning. Uh, cost, obviously, is will one project eat up the entire fund, maybe that's okay, maybe that's not, and along with cost is always cost benefit, is it worth the cost? Uh, timing, are we ready to take on the project, is it right, are we ready to go, are we ready to move on it? Uh, can it be completed more quickly than some other projects so at least we can get started um, enjoying this uh, amenity? Then there's always like supply chain issues and stuff like that that we've gotten used to, construction delays. So timing. Uh, availability of funding from other sources. If, if there's a really great project but we think there's a likelihood of getting funding from another source like a grant, um, maybe that shouldn't be something that's a priority for, for this fund. Uh, and then fair distribution of park resources uh, across the township. And I'm not suggesting we divide up whatever money there is seven ways, but if there are neighborhoods that um, have fewer park resources than others, and I think that's a factor we should probably consider. And then there are probably other things um, that I haven't thought of that we ought to factor into um, how we prioritize. And I know, Tammy, you had a couple of priorities you might want to speak to. Um, and I, and I might offer up some of my own, but I want to hear from you guys. And of course, I want to hear from the public. So I hope the public is paying attention to this. And we may need to think about, you know, you know whether we need to step up the way we elicit uh, input from the public or, or whether we can rely on these meetings and uh, the website and what have you. But we do want to hear from the public, obviously. But anyway, Tammy, um, why don't you share with us what some of your thoughts were? Sure, I'll just kind of revert back to um I think I discussed this in either December or January. I think it was January. Um, with regards to all these projects, first of all, just to point out, this document is always living and breathing. Um, you know, we, we, get, we get information coming at us from a, a variety of sources. We have the Board of Commissioners, we have our Parks Board, we have residents, um, staff has input. So a lot of what has gone into this has come from a number of locations and every day things change and mm -hmm. things evolve and we, we hear new opinions and more wants, wishes and, you know, recommendations and, and that's, that's part of the beauty of it and, you know, developing, you know, what's, what's best for the community. Um, but I, I just wanted to kind of point that out and, and also there's a number of things on this list, you know, you'll see, like say for instance, Bishop Richard Allen Park, park sign. You know, I'm just throwing that one out there as an example. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a new park sign over there. I won't, well, I guess I wouldn't say new. So it's probably, you know, circa uh, 2010, 2012 when we debuted the park or, you know, officially uh, named the park, the Bishop Richard Allen namesake. So that was 2010. But at some point in the next several years, it's going to need replaced. So some of these projects would need to occur you know, sooner versus later, right. you know, it, it's like, you know, it's your, you know, the things in the, with your house, you know, it's a roof, it's HVAC, you know, at some point it's going to need to be replaced. So, um, you know, having everything sort of outlined on there has been a goal of mine because, you know, we, we don't want to forget about the stuff that maybe doesn't need to be replaced today, but, you know, in five or ten years is definitely going to need to be replaced. So that's just really important that you know, you understand that some of those are, are on there. I, you know, we've obviously left costs off because costs today, we can't keep up with them. You know, costs that I learned of a week ago is, is different today. So, you know, that seems to be a bit of a moot point, you know, as we go through this. But looking at, you know, you know, 
living and breathing through these projects every day and in the parks every day, uh, I, I believe strongly that Enki Park's playground surfacing needs to be replaced. Um, it definitely has uh, not held up uh, to the expectations, unfortunately, that we have. I think I talked to you about some of the repairs that we had. There were about six repairs that occurred within the first couple years. Um, and unfortunately, the playground pros who were the installers went out of business. Um, they actually retired. So we went back on them for the warranty in a number of different ways. And unfortunately, we've kind of reached the limit. Our township solicitor has gotten involved. Um, and there's just nothing more that we're able to do to recover uh, on that surfacing, which, as you, you know, is, was just recently installed in 2014. Um, so, and some of it goes back to improper installation, unfortunately. Um, so a, a playground of the size of Enki Park would be one contiguous pour of the soft elements that goes into the surfacing. Um, and they did it in two separate sections. Um, we're not exactly sure why. Um, you know, we, we learned about it and saw it post, you know, post project. And unfortunately, it created a seam. The seam didn't bond well. The seams exposed to water and snow and ice over the course of a year. And it just permeates underneath and starts to break down the material, unfortunately. Um, the good news is over at Clemmer Crone, very similar project, much larger project, we did not see that happen. Um, the, the surfacing, we check it regularly, it seems to be holding up very well. Uh, Public Works team does their best to maintain it by uh, using the blower to blow off all of the, the crumb rubber that it's considered the wear course um, that is, you know, comes off, it's supposed to. So really the, the fall attenuated material is underneath that. What you see on the top is, is just the actual wear course and wear material. So it has to be maintained over time as well. Because if you leave the little particles on there, they do tend to break down the greater, um, uh, the greater surface if you leave it on there with, you know, the shoes, you know, grinding over it and running over it and all that. So um, Enki Park surfacing is opening up in a lot of different locations. I know I try to encourage everyone to go out and take a look at it. Um, for those of you who had an opportunity to see it, you probably are well aware of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tears, openings. Um, I know Public Works have tried to do their best with some kits that we've had that have been provided by the manufacturer. Um, but at this point, it really, there's so many areas where it's worn, it, it needs to be replaced. So that was one that sat the highest on my list. Um, and I know we've had some community advocacy for the sunshades or some sort of, of design coverage um, to provide shade for the facility. Um, and it just seemed like a natural to have both those projects done at the same time where the, where, you know, the, the playground surfacing gets replaced as well as the installation of the sunshade. We close the playground down for you know, one, pr one project that gets both done. Um, so that was one of the top recommendations that I had in the spirit of safety. So, you know, when we take a look at this and, you know, we go across all the parks from, you know, one side of the township to the, to the other. And we have a lot of parks. There's a lot of spaces out there. So we have a lot of responsibility that sits out there. And that's not to say that, like, tomorrow something at the skate park could break down or, you know, as we saw at Cowan, um, we had the transfer bridge break down. And, you know, we weren't expecting that, unfortunately, you know. So those things are going to happen. We had two slides break last year, one at Odorisio and one over at South Devon. We had to have those replaced. So projects are going to come up, but as, as we look at things right now, I think that's one that sits at the top. I know we discussed a little bit about um, fencing over at Harford Park to separate the dog area and the parking lot. Uh, we've seen that be successful at Friends of Bradner Trails Park. That could be a consideration. We talked a little bit about the trail undercutting and erosion over in Skunk Hollow, significant problem, um, but would be a separate bucket of money. Um, I don't think the 275000 that would be sitting in this fund would, would necessarily get that job done, not to mention there's a lot of uh, pieces with DEP and Army Corps of Engineers that we have to go through to be able to restore Stream Bank. Um, so I know we were looking at some alternatives in the meantime on that to see where we can close the trail down and possibly reroute some of the areas. So I know we're looking at that with the scouts. Um, so I mean, that, th that would be my recommendation. And I know that the Odorisio park improvements are something that sit on everybody's radar. So one thought might be is to allocate some funding for design. 
um, after we go through a public process, of course, and gain some feedback, um, you know, on that particular project where we can look look at, you know, development of the comfort station, the play, you know, the playground, and some of the other projects that may be desired by the community. Tammy, um, can I just ask just for quick clarification, because the Odoricio Park is on here, which makes sense from a, you know, an inventory of all of our parks, but you said there's $125,000 set aside for Odoricio. It's not clear to me that would cover all the items listed here. Is, are any of these, are these all separate from what that $125,000 is earmarked for? Well, or the thought is the bucket that we can start there, but we may need to pull more of the 400 for this. We would probably have to pull more, but that, so that money was earmarked by a developer right in the Odorisio community. So um, I think that was really positive thinking because it, you know, it's going to be applied right at Odorisio Park. I know there was talk when the money came in about maybe redoing the parking lot or, you know, some other specific area of the park. So we haven't had any further discussion on what that would be. Um, so my thought was is that, you know, you probably could cover design within that 275 um, or, you know, I don't know that you want to take the 125 and put it right towards design. I would almost, you know, save that and earmark that towards an actual improvement, you know, construction-based improvement. But I think design is something we're going to have to think about. You know, now that we know we're going to engage the Odorisio community, we're going to have to be able to fund, you know, someone to put, even though we're, you know, we might not be talking about a lot of areas of the park, you know, I don't know that we're going to change the ball field and move it and do something different. And we already know the best, the basketball courts being replaced. Who knows, you know, ultimately, you know, we might only be talking about the woods area and, um, you know, the strip of land there where the, the comfort station and the playground and everything are currently situated. Can I jump in here? Uh, I'm sorry, yes, Sarah, please, are, are you? Okay. Um, Tammy, I think that's actually uh, a, a great idea, uh, just in general. Um, and this is something, uh, Mary, that you said that you brought up. Um, you know, doing things, uh, doing them once, closing them down once, so you're one and done. So if we do put the sunshades up or look at doing something like that, do it in conjunction with replacing um, the, the, uh, the foam or whatever the padding is. So the kids don't have it shut down all year. Just, um, and I think that when we look at this list right here, we should look at, um, you know, and, and it, becomes a pro it becomes a problem sometimes, but we should look at um, what can we do to, to shut things down once. Sarah, uh, to your point, roads uh, is a big thing as well. So if we're putting a culvert in and the park is going to not be used because there's heavy equipment and there's roads. Let's look at everything that we can do within a reasonable budget and time frame. And obviously, if you can do it in the off season, not always the case, pouring stuff. But obviously, we know that um, playgrounds are probably used uh, more in the spring, uh, fall, and summer than in the winter. But occasionally, we get a couple really nice days. Um, so that, that's actually a really great, great point. Uh, Tammy. The other thing, too, and this kind of hits again to something that Tammy said with uh, um, like the kind of the whole shade tree and the whole um, uh, parks and rec. So I'm looking here and it says like, you know, this needs to get replaced every 20 years or every 10 years or every 15 years. Uh, and this may be a pipe dream and it's not necessarily related to the capital budget, but it kind of is. Um, where if we had someone shade tree like uh, our arborist look at each tree and say this tree probably has five more years or, or 10 more years left in its life, that we're not going to do a, a, a clear cut as a lot of people worry about. And if we can inventory these trees, and I know it's not your job, Tammy, it's going to be more of a shade tree and more of a community effort, but uh, public works and you'll, you'll work in conjunction with uh, one another. But if you look at these trees and you know this is a, you know, a white oak and it's got a lifespan of 50 years or, you know, if something is sick or something is getting brittle like those Bradford pears, um, we can kind of um, just look at each tree and expect uh, and their life expectancy and uh, plant one before we take one down or maybe plant two before we take one down and look at the different species and how long they last. So. Just kind of piggybacking, uh, great idea, Tammy, and uh, yeah, so that's it. 
So also kind of piggybacking on that, because I think what you were also saying is we could, you know, if you're looking at trees and you need to do work. So for example, right now there's some questions about whether some of the trees at Fenimore Woods are healthy. You know, being able to do those things in conjunction with other renovations at a park. So everything's kind of, you know, it's the, all at once, rather than sh shutting down pieces of parks all through the year, you know, if you've got one and you can shut it down for a month to get all that work done, it's helpful. One question I had, Tammy, and it's certainly not something we're going to resolve tonight, but just kind of as a long-term thinking, and it came, it came to mind when you were talking about, like, the, the sign at Bishop Allen Park, and you said, you know, it's, it's about 10 or 12 years old, it's going to be need to be replaced in the next two or three years. And I don't, I don't know the system you have this in, but I wonder if there's a way to kind of, and I know we're focused on this year, but to have like a, a planning, you know, the next three or the next five years that says like, do buy, you know. So we all have an understanding, you know, yes, it's a 20 year useful life, but we're only 12 years in, or it's, it's a 15 year useful life and we're 20 years in, so this is getting more and more urgent. We're living on borrowed time kind of thing. We do, that, this you have sits, that. it's just not on the, here. Yeah, this sits within, a much greater, more yeah, complex and sophisticated yes. system. Okay. And part of that system has costs in it. So got it. That's why got that's kind of clipped so out. Yeah, share. because I, I didn't it. want everyone to have a, a you know, be hung up on the cost then and no, that's as fair. we know those are ever changing right yeah. now. So yep. but yes, absolutely. And does your system also then have something that kind of indicates um, the urgency level, kind of to, to Mary's point about safety, et cetera, but also kind of, again how far behind we are on things. Um, we, we don't have designators in the capital plan on that. Um, those kind of just evolve. Um, but, I mean, that's something we can look to incorporate. Um, I'm sure there's a method that we can put in place. I know that, you know, with our capital plan obviously is ultimately something that gets submitted to the Board of Commissioners. I don't think a full-blown plan was given to the commissioners this year because there wasn't funding. Um, but I know it's something that we're building and working on on a regular basis. I know something we're actually in the middle of right now that ultimately is going to go to the Board of Commissioners. So, and, you know, just to kind of carve out real quick the facilities, you know, we know that there are some eminent needs within facilities. So I know that's something we're going to be prepared to present to the Board. Yeah, Sarah, I mean, uh, public safety is always number one uh, when it comes to uh, our police. And, uh, you know, they're, they see a lot of this stuff. They patrol. Public Works is there, and uh, we have great community members. There are eyes and ears on the playgrounds. They contact the commissioners. They contact me if there's a problem at Clem McCrone. Uh, I know Maggie Myers uh, sitting to my left. Uh, she's been very, very, uh, um, let's, uh, you know, she's done a great job and been very involved in Fenimore Wood. So um, obviously, uh, for, at least for me, um, safety has always been a, a, a priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess, I you know, Mary, to your question to us about, you know, how would we prioritize, I don't feel equipped, maybe other people do on the board and more power to you for having that time, but um, to really say, you know, oh, I think it's more important that we do this sign or this trail replacement. I, you know, I absolutely agree on that stream bank, but I think, you know, maybe there's outside oh, yeah, funding like for something right. like that um, at Skunk Hollow. I, I guess I would say, you know, safety, and while I think new is good, I think we, you know, maintenance of existing structures and not letting things, you know, the stables is kind of an unfortunate example of something that we let go because we had other things we had to do that were new and, and not that they weren't worthy. But, you know, if there are things we should be maintaining now, like I think there are some um, buildings at the Willows, and if we really intend to keep them, then, then maybe that's where we need to prioritize before they get so far gone that we can't we can't repair them anymore, you know. It, so, you know, and, and parking lots that become unsafe because we've let them kind of crumble. So that's where I would focus. I, I would love to see new sunshades, and if it makes the most sense to put one at Enki, great. But I think before we commit to, you know, with such limited funding, before we commit to new things that are going to require maintenance and oversight, we probably need to make sure we've got all our ducks in a line in terms of the the facilities that we have currently. Right, and just to, to echo that, um, and I'm not trying to make a case against the sunshade, so please don't take it that way, but there is a significant maintenance factor that, that comes in with that because they are going to have to be removed every winter. Um, you know, the, the good news is, is that they will come with a, a quick release latching system where that can be done, but they are something that our public works team is going to have to get up high 
Um, I want to say the tallest structure within Enki Park goes 14 feet. The eave of the, the playground sunshade is going to be taller than that, obviously. Um, it's something that's going to have to be retracted, pulled down. If it's dirty, it's going to have to be cleaned. And if it's cleaned, it's going to have to be dried. If it's dried, it's going to have to, you know, obviously lay in a, in a spot for a significant amount of time. And, you know, we're talking about something that's, you know, 55 by 45 if we're really going to cover the, the main playground structure. Um, so there's, a, there's some different scenarios we can look at, you know, in terms of the shades, you know, we can do like singular cantilever, you know, based um, shades that go over certain aspects of the playground. Um, but I know in talking with the residents who were interested in this project, they wanted the entire main play structure covered. So you're talking about a very big shade. Um, so once it comes down, it's got to go, it's, you know, it's got to be cleaned, it's got to be stored, it's got to be free where mice can't get to it and chew on it in the winter. That's what they like to do. I know they do that in my attic and get into anything that has some sort of cloth to it. So storage is going to have to be a really key factor. Um, and then they've got to be put back up, you know, in the spring. And then it's going to have to be done all over again, you know, come October, come November. Um, so there's a, there's a maintenance factor that goes along with it. Uh, the lifeline on them, you know, from the feedback I've gotten, it just varies, you know, but it could be 12 to 15 years. Might not get a full 20 years, you know, out of a sunshade. Um, and once the UV hits it, even though they'll have UV protective coating on them, UV, as you know, it breaks everything down over time. So there is a maintenance factor that comes along with that that has to be considered. And, you know, I, I you know, want to make sure that our, our public works team is fully you know, equipped, you know, to be able to manage that because um, that's important, you know, that we take care of it. We don't want to, you know, leave it up in the winter and have, you know, a snow load end up on it and destroy it, rip it, you know, what have you. So I, I just want to point out there are definitely considerations. Um, and, you know, we've never had sunshades before. So this is a new project. It's a new project for me and, you know, our team here, you know, from our public works director to our engineer, everyone. So, you know, maybe there are alternative considerations, you know, that we can look at. Um, I don't know exactly what those are, but there are definitely some things that we could probably, you know, look at and be creative. Um, but I know we have some strong advocacy in the community, so I don't want to discount that. I just saw it as a, a likely project since the surfacing, you know, to me is a safety, it's a safety condition. And, and the, the surfacing, um, just also uh, to note, it can be restored uh, to its poured in place surfacing that's currently out there now that you're used to walking on, you know, the nice soft foam that feels really comfortable on everybody's feet, or it can be restored to the wood fiber, the fall attenuated engineered wood chips, which is just a fancy way for saying the same type of wood chips that we have over at, uh, you know, Odorisio and South Devon and Petrie, you know, at all of our other parks. So we can restore it to be wood chips Again, if we would like to do that, our original playground at Enki Park was wood chips. They all were, and Enki was the, ironically, I rank, I, ironically Enki was the very first poured in place surfacing project we had, and unfortunately it failed, but it didn't fail because of the product, it failed because of installation. Um, and it takes a while for trees to get to any size, but I think I we've got a lot of environmental advocates on, on this group, you know, in this group and in the community who, you know, I'm sure would prefer to see it large trees shading parks than, um, you know, a cantilevered or any other kind of sunshade. I understand a tree doesn't grow up overnight, though, and so, you know, maybe to the extent the commissioners decide to invest in a sunshade, they could also invest in some trees in that area that when the sunshade fails, it doesn't get replaced. Right. There are trees there that even if it's going to be another three or four years, the community, you know, could wait for those trees to fill out and, and provide that natural sunshade. Sarah, you're reading my mind. Yeah, I was I was just going to say, what about what about trees? You're right. I mean, it's not going to be there overnight, but if we invest and then, you know, 15 years down the road, you've got your what your tulip tree that grows like 20 feet in five minutes um, casting shade. Um, you know, maybe we should be doing both at the same time. Get those little guys in there so that they're, you know, there are some trees that grow pretty quickly that are good, have good canopies. Um, 
I mean, there are pros and cons with trees, too, because they drop branches and what have you. But well, but if they drop branches on a wood mulch, well, uh, that's not as bad as if they're dropping it on the surface that needs to be Well, as long as they're not there. dropping a branch on a kid. But, I mean, you oh, know, yeah. people yeah. freely <laughs> go into Skunk Hollow, where there are, last time I looked, plenty of trees, and <laughs> seem to be willing to take that risk. And then we're talking in Fenimore about making sure there are trees. So, clearly, you know, people don't have a problem with that. But, um, but you know, in a way, something you said... Um, Everything you say, as usual, Tammy, makes perfect sense, but it was occurring to me while you were, were talking about safety issues. You know, at this point, with climate change and the heat uh, and, and the impacts on equipment, I mean, it almost is dangerous in a way. I mean, you could see how a, a, you could actually get a little bit of a burn from, you know, overheated equipment. So, yeah, you know, it's an issue. Uh, Mary, uh, I asked Ian to uh, put something up. I have an idea I think that may make. Um, sense. I was talking with Tammy about uh, the sunshades and everything. Um, I think they're great. I think it's a great idea. Um, but to Tammy's concern, they probably can get brittle. We don't have too much experience in this type of technology moving forward. Um, so I'm throwing around ideas as I, as I do, and we're going to see what sticks. So what I thought, and once Ian, um, uh, uh, if he's able to put this up, awesome. Um, is to have something more industrial, like a, uh, an industrial trellis. I mean, we've seen them all over uh, outside fancy, you know, restaurants, uh, restaurants, outdoor dining. Uh, once Ian puts it up, um, there we go. There we go. Something like that. Now, you're going to say that doesn't block the shade, and you're 100% right. What I would think of doing is either putting some kind of planter on the poles or on the corners and weaving in some kind of vegetation, I'm just going to say ivy because we all know what it is, some kind of vegetation that doesn't particularly shed its leaves. You can weave it through. Um, it doesn't need to get taken down. Uh, and it will provide a much more natural type of look to it. Um, I know it's not a tree that everyone wants, but it is still living. It is still vegetation. It's still helpful to the environment. Now, it's not to say that it won't have its problems. Um, you know, you would need to somehow water it if it is up top. Uh, Sarah, to your point, safety is definitely an issue. You don't want, you know, people using that as a jungle gym. So there's definitely some issues. And, uh, you know, eventually, like anything, it has a life. It would have to get replaced. But um, and the other issue is, let's say you had a slide that's 15, 20 feet tall, and, you know, they only make it 10 feet or whatever it is, it may not cover the whole uh, playground. But I think it would, um, you know, I think something like that could work and it could have a more natural feel. That's absolutely not a design, just an idea of something like that, weaving a vegetation um, through there. Uh, I, I think that could, could work as, as well. I love the idea. I mean, you could you could just plant. I mean, I, I'm I'm picturing posts and then having sort of this pergola thing. But I mean, if you had some sort of plant that's grow, you know, that's really hardy in this climate, mm -hmm. plant along each post and then growing over the the top. Sure. Yeah. You, uh -huh. I mean, it wouldn't be rainproof, but it would be it would definitely cast shade. No, it's it's not going to be. You don't want it to be. You don't want a, a shade like this because if you get a windstorm. Oh yeah. This Absolutely. whole thing goes through, right? So you want holes, you want, you yeah. want a little bit of, of, I don't, aeration, probably the wrong term. So it doesn't get taken down if there is a bad storm. So again, I think there are probably more pros than cons, but it's definitely something I that I, I think that, you know, maybe this board and, and Tammy, Public Works and Engineering should maybe investigate to see if that's a, that's a route we want to go. Mm -hmm. So one of the things with that too, I know we talked about, is that it could be custom designed so, I mean, if we did want to have it be tall enough to go over the tallest mm -hmm. structure, I, you know, I don't see that being impediment, an impediment to a project like this. Um, obviously, there's certain codes that would go into play, of course, to, to evaluate this and look at it. But I think you could have a, an architect you know, custom design something like this that could work. I've never seen it before. I know when Sean brought the idea up, I was like wild by it. I thought it was very creative and very natural. Um, and you know, it's always 
it's always neat to do something, you know, maybe that someone else hasn't done and hasn't yeah, been done absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. You know, like we like to be trendsetters. <laughs> I like that. I'll, I'll admit it. I'll well. take it. I'll, I'll definitely say we like to do that. And we do a lot of that here in Radnor. Um, but I think it's creative and it's... I'm the second born, Tammy. So, you know, I've had to, <laughs> I've had to get, you know, do this stuff to, to uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, but I, like I said, I'll thank you for at least entertaining the idea. No, I think, I mean, I think certain landscape architects would be, they would love this project. I mean, I would anyway. We have, so, we have some folks I know have done some creative things, but I haven't seen something like this before. I mean, I've seen some creative um, pergola, uh, green roof type structures on pavilions, which are some things we would probably be evaluating over at Fenimore Woods ultimately, but to do it over a playground is not something I've seen other than in a backyard. Um, so I think it's something that has a, a lot of merit. idea great idea. I love it. I just would worry about um, creative and tall teenagers who will decide that that looks like an awesome jungle gym. We talked about that too. <laughs> we, we banned teenagers from the township. That's what we you know, <laughs> if you go over to Clem well, Crone, teenagers, I mean need adults a permit. sometimes If you go to Clem Crone, no, they actually have been on, I've seen them on the rooftops, on the top of the rooftops. And of course, my 40 something year old brain is like blown away by that, but I probably would have done that when I was there. I was right? so. You probably did that, Tammy. <laughs> Tops of what? Uh, of these? Tops of the structures at Clemacrone, which are tall. They're, they're oh, yeah, that was a. Uh, uh, it was. Uh, yeah, next, next subject. <laughs> <laughs> was that you up no, there? No, it was something, well, we, we went up there to get the balls in while mm -hmm. we were up there looking for the balls that we lost up there. We might have stayed up there for, sure. uh, you know, a little Stop. bit more time to throw a rock or two at somebody that, you know, you, you thought had it coming. <laughs> but my, my question is this. Um, the, uh, the surface that you have at um, Clay McCrone, the, the surface that you're talking about is kind of foamy and everything, as opposed to the wood chips, what's, what was the, uh, uh, just for my own curiosity, what was the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the catalyst that, went for that foam over the wood chips. Well, so the, the wood chips aren't there. There's a, there is a, um, right, like, like a crub rubber and tie, actually ground up tire shreds that are underneath that comprise the fall. Like they're, they're what's basically catching the fall. And the depth is measured and, and allocated based on how many deckings you have that are stacked up, you know, on the play features. Oh. So all of that is, you know, part of a scientific calculation that basically says if you fall from X amount of height down to this area, here's the depth of which the padding is, you know, comprised. It's okay. safe, basically. It's okay. not going to stop you from getting hurt. But yeah. so the reasoning, but the reasoning behind it was just um, less maintenance because the the, the wood fiber does have to be raked around on a regular basis. It mm -hmm. gets blown out in different areas from where the kids either dig it out by hand or like underneath the swings, usually where the feet drag, it, it digs out. So, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's a permeable surface. So, um, you know, it's, it's stylish, you know, it's, it's definitely something you'll see in a lot of playgrounds, um, but you see, you really see both. Um, okay, because I, 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 I was just thinking back to when we had the swing sets at Autoricio. We also had the trees there that, um, that were right in the shading line of where we were swinging. And we would just jump, you know, well, back in the day, we, we would swing and jump as far as we possibly could, challenging each other. And falling on those chips, you know, for us, it was like, well, this is just like falling in sand for us, you know? It, it, I don't want to say that you, you didn't get hurt. I don't want to say that. But I'm saying that um, it, it was like falling on a surface, but you knew that there were little chips there that you were going to feel those. But for the most part, it was falling onto a soft surface. That's why, that's why I asked about the uh, foam, because it just seemed like it, it was already, I mean, there were, there were different mounds of, of you know the chips are around in the uh, the barriers and everything, but it was it was kind of a soft surface just to just to land on, you know. And 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 again with the trees like you were talking about when the trees were growing up, and by the time we got up there as kids, the trees were wonderful shape for us on the swings, you know. Uh, 
depending upon where the, well, I mean, the, you know, the way the artificial park is set up, when the sun's, you know, just right in front of us, you, you have the trees protecting us. So, I, I mean, I know every park's different as well. But um, that was, it, it just reminded me of what, what we had back then, you know, and, and how, how the surface was and how we were able to swing and, and the sun protected us and everything. So, um, I mean, and, and I understand that we had a big tire out there too that, that cracked over the years, but we were able to crawl in and out of that tire, but over the years it did crack, but I, I think that didn't happen until I was way out of high school. But it, I mean, there were some long lasting things back then too, you know? But I, I, I understand the direction everybody, like you say, eco-friendly and all that, but I'm just thinking back to where we had a great time out there, you know? That's, it's just making, I guess I'm getting nostalgic about the whole thing, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> well, thank you. Tam you can I have a, a count? Tammy, um, is it, would it be more cost effective to, and forgive me if we went over this last time, to get rid of the entire foundation at Anki and replace it or to repair? In the condition that it's in right now, it needs to be replaced. Completely. At the, yes, because there's so many areas where it's broken down. So it, for the shortest term, when it was installed, it was just along the seam, and then it's just it's grown to a lot of other locations. So it's not, so a, it's not a patch project. It's, it's not. I mean, replaced. you could, if that was all we had yeah. to do, like if we made a decision that we weren't going to spend this money in that direction, and I would, I would go out and work as hard as I could to come up with a solution to try and patch it with large patches as best as possible. So there's kits that we can get to be able to do that. Right. But what happens is, is when you do that, you have to cut the section out. So where it's torn and where it's flipping, you know, back and out, you have to cut, you have to cut that all out. And then you put the, the crumb rubber in there, it fuses with the epoxy and it, you know, you, you reinstall it basically. But then over time, you know, the binder and the epoxy doesn't always match up 100% and it's gonna break down again. So we're gonna have to go do it again. So, I mean, there's definitely a, we could patch it just like a pothole in a parking lot, but um, over time it's going to continue to break down and break down more and more. So the recommendation, like I said, was to replace it. Well, again, whether that's replace as poured in place surfacing, which is obviously more expensive um, than doing the, the, wood, the wood chips, you know, the, the fiber engineered wood chips, uh, but we can evaluate that um, because there is a cost differential. If we wanted to restore it in that direction, we can well, certainly but do I that. Think it would be Both would be the same amount of safety. Just It's not that you compromise safety with the fall attenuated wood chips. They work in the same way that the poured in place surfacing does. It's just they're not as consistent across the surface. So you have variability across the surface that occurs over time because the stuff gets kicked around, it washes out, it moves, and then obviously the Parks and Rec Department, the Public, st public Works Department has to refill it, okay. if that makes sense. So, and that was actually gonna be my point about cost, you know, we can look at cost in terms of what it costs to install one or the other, but if over the course of a 10, 15 year mm -hmm. lifespan, it costs us significantly more in maintenance, and maybe it doesn't, because the one, you said that the, the rubber surface has to be, have like, be blown off, has the crumble blown off it. But if there's a significant dif cost in, difference in maintenance costs, I think it's worth making sure the commissioners understand that when they make a decision. And I just have a couple comments. Um, one is that uh, regarding the, sh the, the shade, you're absolutely right. I did a lot of research, Tammy. If you can find a park with our seasons who has that, you, none of them are usually parks. They're actually like Sesame Place and daycares. But to find a public park that has that type of sale that covers it, like you said, you have to go to like Arizona. Like I did a yeah. lot of research to find. It's just very, because it's the maintenance is extremely expensive, you know, to, to take care of these. So there's not a lot out there. So I love your idea. I think that's great, Sean. Um, the one suggestion I'll make, and this is just my way of kind of like Mary said to looking at this and evaluating it. Uh, there are three parks I think noted that needed uh, or asked for it. Perhaps we could 
from a supply standpoint as well, maybe get a quote for all three parks and what that would cost to try to save on that, just throwing it out there, especially with supply going on right now. Um, is that my cricket? That's me. I was like, um, sorry. If, if I have like a bug in my, I'm sorry. I brought okay. my pet, I brought the, my pet uh, cricket with so that, me. That, but I think you're spot on, Sean. I think something natural it fits it's a it. It's spring peeper. <laughs> um, so my other suggestion was, uh, so I think consolidating anything we can on this list too with like buying stuff to also increase that money so that we also maybe get a better deal. But the other, uh, the other part that I was going to say is I'll, I'm more than willing to volunteer to go out and take pictures because for me, I'm like a visual person. I know you might have pictures, but we haven't seen any. I, haven't, I can go out to any of these if that helps us for prioritizing to say like, hey, this is. But I will go out and I'll take a chunk of parks and I'll come back to the board. If everybody maybe take a little bit of a few of these, maybe we could just say like, hey, yeah, like look at this, look at you know the way this uh, basketball court looks. I think that might help to give a little perspective in terms of how bad things are really. And then my last comment, and then I'll stop talking. Um, like install AEDs and convert traditional fountains. I think it's fantastic, and I think those are things that that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, especially with COVID, that we need to think about safety, cleanliness, whatever we can do to keep things moving. So I absolutely think that that stuff needs to be done. But um, so I'm just placing it out there that I will volunteer to go out and take pictures of anything that to help bring our own awareness of what needs to be go done. Ahead, and if I think if everyone took a chunk of that, I think it would help for us to kind of consolidate those pictures and say this is today's snapshot of what this park looks like right now and what we have to do. And then I think that was it. The only other option too is is we can do some solar things with the uh, sunshades or solar options, just putting it out there. It's just they're still high mm -hmm. maintenance and a lot of work. So yeah. I'm in the solar business. So that's the only other thing. So sorry, Christina. Sorry, let me yeah. let me uh, uh, just jump in. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of you going out and taking pictures. But I'll tell and and thank you for volunteering. Yes. But I think what worked wonderful last year was it last year was when we did the um, on site. So I think that if we do some of these meetings on site and if Ian wants to come there and record some of it, some of the discussion, it doesn't have to be all of it or get some pictures so the people at home can see it, then uh, I think that's the best use of our time. We can see it, um, you know, we can see it and we're hands on, we can touch it and feel it. And uh, Ian or whomever can take pictures for the perfect example would be um, uh, the stable at Fenimore Woods. Right. What are the problems? You know, it's the roof, and then you take a picture of the roof. But as long as we're there, and uh, you know, we can all kind of see it together. I think that will add to the conversation, and one idea may spawn another idea, which would spawn another idea. So, uh, to, to your point, yeah, I think that may that's that's how I would look at it from a board standpoint. So if it pleases uh, Mary and, and everybody else, I think arranging some of them, uh, you know, weather permitting in the spring, summer, or fall, I think that's, uh, that's good. I wonder if it's, um, I wonder if we could do that at our next meeting, which will, I mean, by eight, that'll be mid-April, early April. I don't know. Um, I think our that meeting's too early premature. in April. I believe it's April 4th. It's the April, week before, just account. to throw out the date. April 7th, I believe, is ah, the okay. date, just so early. you know. Yeah. But still, um, unless there was some reason why we really needed a, you know, an, a live here in the room type meeting, or, you know, or if failing that in May, I mean, the weather's getting nicer. It's, it's a good time to do that. There really is no, I mean, I, I thank you so much, Christina, for, for volunteering to do that. I think it's nice to have a, like a, perma, a permanent record of something you could look at any time, 11 o'clock at night, if, they, if that's when you have free time. But but uh, but well, I was gonna. I, what I was gonna suggest is everybody get out there and check out these parks, you know, in the next month. So so there's that too. But there's also some real advantages of of all of us or as many of us as can do it, visiting parks at the same time and bouncing ideas off each other. I, I, and we did do this either. I it was either last year or the year before. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's a good thing to do at least once a year. I think. I mean, we probably should make that a regular part of what we do. 
Uh, but I do want to encourage, to the extent people have time, um, to, you know, to try to see the parks, even on your own, fit it in a schedule on your way to, you know, the Acme or Giant or wherever you're going, CVS. Well, we all Stop live near another park. some we of all, these, right? Yeah. So if you all Not all of them, but maybe get most of five them. Five of them. You know. You know yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I could make a two quick comments. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Andy. One, with, and I think Tammy would be able to speak to this, I would, just as people are evaluating things, Anki is probably, my uneducated guess is the park that's visited the most by non-residents of Radnor, just because of Little League and other activities there. So it may be like the sort of the face of our parks in general to the outside community. It's just something to think about maybe in consideration of what we use it for. Um, the other thing to sort of um, piggyback off the idea about going out to the different parks, you know, something the board may want to consider is sort of having um, certain parks tied to certain members. Like you know, I live right by, I think, Creek Park. I run by it. Yeah. We and need to update and that. just sort of have those sort of people, each individual have certain parks that are sort of in their portfolio, they're sort of representations of it. Um, you know, I don't, I think I haven't been to Hartford Park in 12 years, but I can tell you everything that goes on over at Ithing Creek, and I'm sure the opposite could be up for others. So just yeah. something to consider is maybe something going forward. So when these ideas do come up or something that we see, can bring it to the board at the immediate attention, so. Andy, thanks for bringing that. We have, we, it's time for, it's time to refresh that list of who's assigned to what park. We haven't really talked about it much in recent memory. So it's, and there have been some changes in, in, in our, our composition here. So I think um, maybe that's on our to-do list for next month, uh, Tammy, is to revisit those park assignments and, uh, you know, periodically get a report, you know, or maybe monthly if anybody has anything to report specifically about their park or, or not. And we could catalog, that's why I was kind of going with the catalog, like you said, so that you could see how things are maybe getting deteriorated, even if they're not addressed this year. Like, hey, you know, these are some pictures for our own, you know, just as the group so that I can say, because And, and just so you know, we do take pictures of I, all and of I, And I totally. I have more pictures just, than Bob Hale can find space for on the, <laughs> on the drive. I'm, I'm serious. I've had to, like, cut space back because, I mean, he's had to, like, improve server space for the amount of pictures our department has. I'm, I'm just being <laughs> sarcastic, but we do, we do take of everything. Every time we're on site and we see these issues to put this documentation together, we have those. I mean, right. you know, things worsen in sometimes a month or, you know, six months or a year, so you go back and do those. I know at one point our capital plan included that to the commissioners. But the problem with that is that, again, you know, there, you do it one year, you've got to go back and do it the next and the next. And it also was one page per project in the capital budget. So it took it from it's already... 300 pages to 500 so but that is a project that we did work on over the years it's something you know we can get back to if you know we're directed to do that or if there's certain projects that you know are so eminent that we need to provide that you know that actual you know close-up picture or you know footage whatever is needed okay I'm looking at the clock and I'm looking at our agenda and I want to get everybody out of here um, any more input tonight on um, on the uh, capital projects impact fees? Um, or we, but you know, yes. Let's all educate ourselves and, and let's, uh, to the extent you know, one is able to form an opinion about something based on all the various factors we laid out. Um, uh, you know, let's see if we can come up with what we think are priorities, and we'll you know we'll get reality checks from each other and from Tammy on whether something is as urgent as we think it is or because you know uh, clearly we're not all up to speed on all I don't know 100 projects here and I have a can't quick be. question Tammy yeah. the impact fund is that a certain amount that is must be approved by the Board of Commissioners in order to use that funny well, funny money <laughs> funds it's not funny money no it's already been earmarked for capital projects so okay. it's available for the taking at this point okay. so okay. if we decided on one project or three we can start to, you know, sufficiently price those out, bid them out, whatever the process is needed for said project, and then upon the appropriate authorizations from the commissioners for the spending and their approval, we would be able to make the, like, get the projects going. Okay, moving on. Uh, tell us about basketball courts, Tammy. 
Sure, so real quick, the project is slated to begin on Monday, March 28th. Um, erosion and sedimentation control will be set up. The tree boundaries will all be set up on that Monday at both parks. And soon after construction, well, demolition is going to be getting underway. So we're going to have some notes and information um, that will go out to members of the public. It will be on social media, in our e-newsletter. We're going to include some information in the letter that's going to go out to the residents uh, to make sure that they understand that there are going to be limitations and closures. And there is a project website that I had set up just to document uh, all of the corresponding closures, um, timelines, and then obviously pictures as the project carries on. So that's been established at our township website. So uh, we would expect that by June, both projects should be done, weather permitting. It's fabulous. I guess I better start jogging. It's concrete results. <laughs> uh, next issue, um, um, Willows Park preserving concerns about dogs in the Willows Park and the trails and I guess parks generally. Um, Tammy and I and uh, Joanne Capuzzi, am I saying, pronounce that properly? And Bill Gallagher, was it, from the township, had a uh, call about a week or so, maybe it was two weeks ago, um, because uh, to talk about dogs in parks, um, because the Board of Health is, is actually reviewing uh, dog ordinances or animals uh, or ordinances right now from a health perspective. And, um, you know, obviously we've got an overlap. We've been talking about dogs for three or four or five years now, uh, dogs in parks, and, and Board of Health is interested in dogs in parks from a health perspective, so we obviously have a big overlap there. And uh, so we had a phone call, very productive phone call, I thought, um, just to get the ball rolling on uh, what we can or should be doing here. And I'll just recap really quickly, and Tammy, jump in if I'm missing something here or get it wrong. Um, we talked about, you know, what are the current township ordinances relating to dogs and are they in need of revision? Again, Board of Health is looking at this. Um, uh, there are two provisions in our, or in our township ordinances. One is a sort of at-large dog um, uh, uh, ordinance, uh, and then another one is park specifically. So we do have some ordinances, um, and they have both uh, restrictions or prohibitions or requirements, and then they have a penalty and violation mm -hmm. section. Um, I won't go into what they say now, but for parks, it's, it's a fairly vague um, requirement that talks about having your dog under control. Um, and um, the other one deals with uh, sort of like your neighborhood dog walking and that leashes are required. And then there's a provision about injury to humans and there's violations there and penalties for that. Um, but what are the health-related issues concerning dogs and parks? Some of the things we talked about were injury to humans from dog bites or dogs knocking people over, injury to dogs from dog fights, injury to dogs and humans from disease like rabies or lack of vaccination, dog, I, I call it dog residue left in the park, still a problem, better than it had been because of some of the improvements we made with um, the bags and the signage and uh, the, the trash cans. Um, uh, Joanne is a, a veterinarian, so she brought up, is it Joanne or Joan? Joan. It's Joan. Joan Capuzzi. Joan. Uh, Joan brought up the need uh, for dogs to have exercise for their health, which is a good point. Dog walking as an incentive for humans to go out and get exercise, which is a good health point. Um, conversely, the presence of unregulated dogs discouraging other people from going into the parks and getting exercised. Unneutered dogs. And we didn't really talk about this, but this is one of my pet peeves because I, I keep tripping over these dogs. Dogs left in cars unattended and heat-related health issues. I had two incidents at the Willows last summer. I couldn't believe it. I had to call the police both times. Um, and we may have missed some, uh, but these were some of the health-related issues uh, we discussed. And we all talked about other issues that were more park-related, like dogs jumping on people and getting mud all over them or dogs damaging wildlife in the parks and uh, frightening way wildlife and overuse of the park, uh, the parks at the trails, um, maybe um, out of towners are using it and that's exacerbating the problem. And then we talked briefly about what measures could be taken to address these problems. Signage, is that enough? We've got some signs, do we need more? Do they need to be clearer? They have to be unambiguous doggy bags and trash cans. We did that, and I do think it's helping to some extent, but I, I've still noticed that we have a problem uh, over at Skunk Hollow at any rate. Uh, fencing, uh, like at Friends of Radnor Trails Park, do, should we have that at Harford Dog Park? Uh, then, of course, there's the amending the ordinances, and if so, what do we do? Do we have outright bans on dogs in certain parks? 
uh, and there are outright bans in quite a few parks right now. Um, I didn't realize there were so many. I knew Willows was off limits, but there are plenty others as well. Do we have bans on dogs in certain parks, on certain days, at certain hours? Do we require leashes in the parks? When uh, do, do we designate portions of certain parks or trails for dogs with or without leashes? Uh, do we? I thought this was an interesting suggestion. Require permits to have dogs in parks, or just designated parks? Uh, permits could require proof that the dog is vaccinated, neutered, et cetera. We'd get a fee from it. Uh, would require that the dog wear a tag or something like that. Other evidence of a permit. Um, do we ban non-residents from bringing dogs to Radnor Parks? Uh, you know, how do we enforce these things? Do we use video cameras? <laughs> Various combinations of the above. Some of the above, all of the above, one or two of the above. And um, for people who have been on the board since I released my award-winning um, report on Barks in the Parks, um, we looked at other township practices and we're aware of what the other municipalities have. And the most liberal of all is Radnor. Uh, every other municipality has uh, leash requirements, uh, except for in places where they require a permit or they have restricted hours. Um, there's some creative ideas that the other municipalities are using, some, some pretty good ideas. Um, and of course, there's an absolute ban on dogs and parks in state and federal parks. So what about enforcement? Uh, we have legal mechanisms there for enforcing, but we just have to use them, but that's a resource thing, and then there are proof issues. And, um, and then the final question, are, are ordinance amendments needed for some or all of these actions? Or can some of this be done at the department level? Is there discretion within the existing ordinances so that we don't have to go to the Board of Commissioners for that? Is it legally possible to do that? Is it better politically to go through the Board of Commissioners even if that isn't necessarily what's required? I may have left a million things out. But just to summarize what I thought was a very productive um, call, and it was good to hear some slightly different perspective um, from uh, the Board of uh, Health Rep. Uh, I, I thought it was a great call. But Tammy, what did I leave out? or? What am I missing? I think you covered everything. I thought it was a really comprehensive phone call. And I think it was good to see Joan's perspective. Um, so I think right now we're just trying to understand the, the timeline and the exact goals and objectives that the Board of Health are, are working on so we can see how, you know, timeline-wise those tie in with, with our discussion. Because um, the last thing we want to do is put something together that maybe contradicts, yes. you know, in some way. So I think it's good now that we're working in, in unison to some degree. Um, and I, so I think right now uh, we're just trying to get an understanding of, you know, where exactly they're headed and what timeline they're on, recognizing they have a lot of items on their plate as well as a board. Right, right. I mean, there's a lot going on with the Board of Health, obviously. Um, but, Tammy, we have a, a, a bunch of um, invitations out there on social media and our website and elsewhere uh, to elicit um, input from the public, and I suspect there will be strong feelings <laughs> on various sides of, of the dog issue. Um, it's always been a controversial subject, um, and there's, no, it still is. <laughs> um, uh, we want to get that input, and um, and I think at some point we, and in the not too distant future, because it really would be good to, to make some progress on this, have a dedicated public meeting, public forum, sort of a la Fenimore for the dog issue as well. Um, I'm sure it will be a very lively discussion, but I think we sort of need, an, you know, that kind of thing. Um, where everybody agrees to be polite up front <laughs> and respectful, and then you know really be fairly candid with their what their opinions. So I I, I see that in the future. But one one quick thought or suggestion, um, just the, uh, as we learn more about what the board of health is doing, maybe there's a way to combine the two boards into one special meeting. Just you yes. know so that yeah. oh absolutely especially since there's so much overlap in there's the discussion. There's a lot of overlap. Yeah. Oh, no, I think that would be very efficient. So uh, I don't know if anybody on the yeah. board has any um, comment on that, a reaction or suggestions. Happy to hear it, if, if so. But um, Mary, can I jump in? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think adding uh, to the mix, if you do have the Board of Health, uh, I would like, um, and I know you're a member of the Willows Park Reserve, to come as well, because um, there's a lot of money that is going to fix up that property. And I, for one, um, if I was going to spend maybe a hundred thousand or more on a wedding and dogs are unfenced and there's a smell of waste um and you know there's 
you know, noise and, and uh, people that, uh, you know, it's a wedding is one thing and people just out uh, with their dogs unleashed is something else. So I would like to hear their perspective because they are the stewards, not only of that building, but really of the whole grounds and that could, you know, really ruin someone's very special day. Yeah. So that's my my big concern is if you could, um, you know, oh, yeah. grab a, grab a couple of those those people because I think that's, um, you know, I don't want to tell you which way I'm leaning about dogs at the Willows, but that's that's a, that's yeah. the biggest concern because if you have one bad wedding there, and the word spreads, then that's, th that's it. Like that's it. And there's a lot of people working very very hard to take something, you know, so it doesn't turn into, as you all said, the stables um, at Fenimore, and to keep something, um, you know, up and nice, and there's a lot of money and time and donations, and you have caterers and everybody, everybody else. So that's really my big thing is, is if you could um, talk to some oh, of absolutely. the members. Thanks. Um, if I may, um, you know, right now the willows, we do not permit dogs at the willows. That's what you um, so my, my <laughs> Supposedly. recommendation would be is to, to take that opportunity to preclude and start some sort of a boundary around the willows mansion, if possible, to at least keep people from coming up in and around the mansion with their dogs. I mean, I've heard stories from the executive director over there about the, you know, they'd have the doors of the solarium wide open and there's an event going on or, you know, small activity going on. Um, you know, they're not doing anything they're not supposed to be doing in there. I know there's still the certificate of occupancy issue, but oh, yeah. they've but had, you know, small fundraising um, events happening and dogs have run into sure. the willows so yeah, you could have people doing work in there sorry to interrupt you know construction workers and someone walks in and there's a hole and the dog gets hurt or somebody else gets hurt um, yeah I, I I think that you know I think pardon I didn't mean to interrupt Tammy I think fencing is a big issue but it goes beyond um, them necessarily running into the building it's a dog, you know, um, drops feces and no one picks it up. Someone is doing their wedding vows and you hear, you know, dark, you know, b dogs barking. It's easy to tell someone to kind of shush. It's hard to pull away two people's dogs. Um, so I think video is good as well, but then I worry that uh, there's going to be a million right to know requests of this person yeah. with this dog and vice versa. And it's like, the township really doesn't want to get involved in that um, and enforcing it unless you have a policeman there. Right. And it, 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 it's such a difficult, difficult issue. Um, and Andy, uh, I remember years ago, um, I mean, years and years and years ago when Clem McCrone first opened, we, they, we talked, because Andy was my neighbor when I lived on Lowry's about um, dogs at Clem McCrone and the, his big thing is like we spent a million dollars on it and these are playgrounds geared to three-year-olds and five-year-olds and the athletic field at the at Clem McCrone that is not a baseball field and 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 14 year old kids think that they can have a a spontaneous pickup game of baseball and they shank a ball it's hitting the um, it's hitting the kids, so kids. There's, yep so there's definitely some areas where you know uh, a a yellow lab could just doesn't see a kid just smack them and, and really hurt them so uh. i point to the sign because i go there for lunch you guys know and at club McCrown, and i point to the sign as people are walking in with their like dogs and i'm like sign and mm -hmm. they're like that's fine they don't care well like, if, <laughs> if, it, if it's leashed typically I'm like, i don't really say yeah I mean, no. I literally point, I know it's a Scottish dog, we'll talk about that later, but <laughs> I really point to the sign. I'm like, there's a sign right there. It's, that's not a way station, sir. No, that's you know, a sign. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah they, the township doesn't yeah, care. No, we bring it, our dogs. It's hard. Like, you know, like if you have the dog at the 4th of July parade and it's on the leash, like no one says anything, but you can't let your dogs run wild through that park. Um, no, it, and, and you, unfortunately, people ask me as a commissioner, what do I do? One person sent me a text. He said, I don't want to be a Karen. I'm like, you got to call 911 because they let this German shepherd actually in that playground. And like this guy's like, I have a four year old or he had a five year old daughter. And I'm like, I'm like, don't don't call the commissioner, call 911. And, you know, but people don't want to do it. So maybe even signage like that, that that if there is something that where someone feels unsafe, 
because of a dog, and they're great. I have one, and you know, to your point, Mary, of Joan, my father is a veterinarian. He was a small animal. Actually, Andy, um, uh, your uh, your uh, father-in-law is a veterinarian as well. So, yeah, it's it's tough. We love it's our dogs. It's super super tough. Yeah, it is. So, and we get to resolve it. But anyway, okay. Um, one last item, I think. Well, we have public participation to it. I don't see anybody here. Um, Park Playground Communications Board proposal. Oh, just a quick update uh, that that's still under design. Um, we're looking at a couple of revisions that, with regards to the actual park features on the communication board, um, would actually not be clip art, but actual park pictures, like park. Um, playground obstacle and equipment pictures. So uh, hopefully uh, we're going to have a final design within the next few weeks and, and possibly even getting a sign uh, under development with a sign company. What are the signs out there right now, sort of the newer brown signs? There are no, no. So this is the, the community. The, these are, I don't know if you were here for the presentation that we had about the for, communication signs. For children with disabilities? Yes. yes There's yes. no signs there now. We're developing them. What are the signs right now? There's a sort of a brown sign right as you pull in. Where? I'm not aware of any sign. Okay. There's a sign now that it says, let's be friends, and it's advertising uh, township social media. Maybe that's Maybe what you're that's referring what okay. to. That, so that's an initiative from our public information officer. Okay. okay. Uh, in case I'm missing anybody out there, public participation. I think we've had our public participation for the night. Okay, guys, uh, we ready to adjourn? Do I have a motion? So moved. All in favor? All right. You missed the best part. We're adjourned. <laughs>